Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So with the latest release of Shotcut version 22.06.23 at the time of this video, they've released a brand new feature for vector graphics and animation, and that tool is Glaxnimate. I've never used this before, but it looks really cool, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you just some of the basics. So basically just what I've learned just by using it briefly. And so the first thing you wanna do is obviously have some tracks on here. So in this case, I have two video tracks. So I have a track on V2, and then I've had a track on V1. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna add a video track above this track. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Track operations, add a video track. So now I have a track above. And once you do that, you can go ahead and add vector graphics or animation. You can go to open other and then go to animation and then Glaxnimate. So this is the new feature. So when you click on that, it's gonna ask you what you wanna name the animation and the duration and also background color. But in this case, I'm gonna leave it as default. So the duration is gonna be five seconds and we'll say okay. And once you do that, Glaxnimate loads up and for anybody who's used other vector graphics programs like Inkscape, it looks very similar to that. All right, so before we get into this, let's go ahead and take a quick tour of Glaxnimate. Now this is its own standalone tool, so you can actually download this software and use it by itself. You don't need to use Shotcut. But in this case, Shotcut has integrated Glaxnimate as its primary vector and graphics animation tool. And so the first thing here is our select tool, and below that is our edit tool. And I'm gonna show you how these work once I create a shape. And then below that, we have a draw bezier. So this is great if you're gonna do um, any type of masking. I myself am not an expert at that, but for anybody who used beziers in the past, you will know how to use it here. And then below that, we actually have a draw freehand. So here you could draw whatever type of shapes that you want. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. And now we actually have our default shapes. The first one is a rectangle. Next up, we have an ellipse or circle. Then we have a star and also polygon. And below that, you can actually add different types of text, which is great. And then we also have a color picker down here. And we also have a fill. And then let's go ahead and go back to our select tool because now we actually have some objects. So as you can see there, we'll move things around. You could resize it if you want. And then if you go down to the edit tool, it allows you to do something similar. See that, so shapes, move things around and adjust things. And so that is the general interface here on the left. And then on the right, we have our color wheel. And so the default here is for your shapes. Now the thing is, you actually have two different colors. There's a primary color, and then there's a secondary color. So right now my primary color is red and then secondary color, it's a lighter shade of red, but what if I choose a different secondary color? That's what happens. So now if you actually create a shape, you could now have a secondary color border around your shape. And then if you click on the next tab on the stroke, this controls the color of your strokes. And so if we actually change this, we could go to the color wheel and adjust this or go down here and then we can go ahead and adjust the color. And I'm gonna make this red. So now I'm gonna make a shape. You know, your strokes, everything's gonna be completely red. And you could also go to style and adjust the width of this as well, which is all important. And then the rest of it, you're gonna to have to just kind of play around with it, you know, uh, but basically if you actually spend some time on this, uh, most of it is fairly intuitive. And then the final thing down here uh, underneath your project timeline, there's actually keyframes. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to use that later to do animations. Okay, so now that we actually have our shapes, let me show you a few other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to this select tool. I'm gonna select everything. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. So now let's go ahead and go back down to our shapes. And under create, there are a few options here. There's raw shape, group, layer, and then there's fill and show. Now, I'm not familiar with the raw shape and group is. And so in this case, I am going to use layer. And then fill, if you create a shape, it'll fill it in, okay? But say, for example, you don't want it to fill in the shape. You just uncheck that. And now there's no fill in this particular shape. 
And the stroke is what I just mentioned a little bit earlier. Here's your stroke. So the color is red right now. And so if you uncheck the stroke, if you create a shape, there won't be anything, okay? So you wanna make sure that you have a stroke on there and you can create your shapes accordingly. So let's go ahead and remove these and I'll go ahead and create our first shape to use in our video. So let's go ahead and go with a simple one. Uh, we'll do circle or ellipse, okay? And then let's go ahead and save this. So we'll save it. Then you go back to shortcut and there is your shape. So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and drag it down to your new video track that you added previously. So we'll go ahead and drag it down here. And now your shape is in your video. Now, one thing that is important that you need to see when you click on this, it's going to show the properties and there's going to be a name. So this is actually the name for this black cinematic file or project that you're actually working with right now. And then there's some other options here. You could adjust the duration. Say, for example, you want it to be 10 seconds instead of five. So right now, if I try to increase this, it doesn't give me the option to increase the duration. But if I go here and, and I increase it manually, just go ahead and Let's put it in 15 seconds. And then now you could actually extend it to 15 seconds. So it's kind of weird that it works that way, but maybe in the future they'll allow you to increase or decrease it just by you know moving things instead of having it to do it that way. And then another thing you could do here is say for example, you wanted to see your image, you know, your video image in the Glaximate tool, which would be a lot easier than having to go back and forth. So you just go ahead and click on edit. And then when you do that, if you go back to Glaxinimate, there is your video. It is now in Glaxinimate, which is really cool. And you could preview it here. But this kind of gives you an idea where everything is, which is really nice. And say, for example, if you were to adjust things, right? So if, for example, I adjusted this and I moved it around. And Try it again, I'll move it around, and then I'll go ahead and increase it. Now, if you do that and you go back to shortcut, it hasn't changed. So what you need to do is you need to save this. We'll go ahead and save it, then you go back, and now it's actually been changed here in shortcut as well. So that is the first step in creating a shape and then saving it, and then having your video or image show up in Glaxinimate. For professional virtual business locations, check out Anytime Mailbox with more than 1,300 locations worldwide at affordable rates. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. All right, so let's go ahead and create our very first animation. This is gonna be very simple. However, if you do spend more time in this tool, you'll probably be able to create some very cool animations. So we're gonna go ahead and come down here to the polygon and star I'm going to add a star and then under create I'm going to go ahead and fill and let's go ahead and create our star okay there's our star now in this case what I want to do is I want this little star to move over here and then become a large star so it's going to animate and also resize itself so now we get to the whole keyframe part now this thing is not as intuitive as creating a shape if you go down here it says record which really doesn't make sense but that's how you actually start setting keyframes. So if you press this, it is say recording keyframes. So now that you've done that, you could go anywhere else in your video and then you could move this shape around and you know do whatever you'd like. So then it could animate to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my select tool. Then I'm gonna move this around over here. And then what I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna make it larger. And in this case, I'm not gonna do anything really fancy. I just wanna show you the basics of it. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on play. And there it is, it animate. And then at the same time, if you wanted to add another keyframe, you could add it here. And then you can move it around. Click on it, move it around. And I'm going to resize it. And Basically, I'm gonna go ahead and make it disappear. Let's say like right here somewhere. But let's see how that looks like. Oh, cool. 
All right, so very basic animation. And if you're happy with that, you could go ahead and turn off the record keyframes and then you could save this. And then if you go back to that cut, you see that the animation is here. So we play this. There is our first animation. <laughs> Very basic, but you kind of get the idea. And for somebody who really loves animating and they want to have more control over it, I think this is a really great option for them. And so that's how you would create your very first basic animation. Now, I wanted to show you something else with this tool and how it works with Shotcut. Say, for example, you really do like this animation or whatever that you create in Glax to make, and you wanted to reuse it in the future. Well, you can do that. You could just go ahead and save this. So we'll go ahead and do a file and save as. So right now, this is the default name that Shotcut created. You could just call it whatever you want. And I'm going to show you how you can use this. So let's say star animate. Okay. So it's a star animate dot R A W R file. So I'm going to say save. And then I'm going to go ahead and shut down Glax animate. And I'm also going to delete this. And now instead of going up here and open other and then animation Glax to make, which would create a brand new project file for Glax to make, we're going to go ahead and open up that animation file that we just saved. So we're going to go here to open file and then find the file that we just saved. And here it is. There is our animation file. And then we could just drag it down here into our track. And then if we want to edit this in Glax to make, um, all you have to do is go here and then choose edit. And there it is. And then you continue working on your project just as you did before. And so this is a really important step. And it was something that I did not realize that, that I can do. And I had to keep creating things over and over. So hopefully this will save you time. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to create a mask using Glaxomate. And so what you need to have is two or more clips. So in this case, I have two clips. And so I'm going to create the mask on the clip above. And so once you select this clip, go ahead and go to your filters tab and go to plus and then type in mask. And you see something called mask draw glaxomate. Now this part is really not obvious because it works differently than what we did earlier. So you're going to have to go here and click on new. And so what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and bring up glaxomate. So now everything's really familiar, except that whatever you're doing here is going to create a mask. Say, for example, I added this circle or ellipse shape above my face. And if I go back to Shotcut, nothing's happening. So what you need to do is you need to save this. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And now when you go back to Shotcut, there is your mask. So I now have a circle mask. And that is really cool. And then it does have a certain period where it disappears because in Glaxomate, you could choose how long this mask is on. So in this case, I'm going to extend it out longer. I'm going to save it. Let's go back. And now it's on a much longer period on the video. So that is important for you to do. And similarly to what we did before, you can save this and reuse it later. And of course, you could add other shapes, which is what I'm going to do. And you can just have a lot of fun with this. And even though it's definitely not intuitive on how to create this, once you figure it out, you're pretty much you know, used to how to do this. All right, so let's go ahead and save it. We'll go back and we'll go ahead and see all our masks and shapes. <laughs> so that is it on Shotcut Glaxnimic. If you actually had any thoughts on this, or any other ways in which you use this tool, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my shortcut tutorials and tips, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area below. As always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Goal Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group.